Let's start off with what to avoid. First, stop adding in animations. Your portfolio's goal is to convey who you are and what you can do. Anything from typewriter effects, particle backgrounds, or cursor trails just look gimmicky and outdated, and it takes away from your portfolio. The next thing to avoid are those skill bars. Firstly, these things are super subjective and don't actually mean anything. What does it mean when a skill is 20% or 100%? No one knows how you're actually judging those numbers, and it would be judged different for everyone. And most importantly, these numbers very easily highlight what you're bad at. Don't you see how easy it is to see that I suck at PHP? Just list the skills and technologies that you are at least somewhat confident in and order them in the confidence in them you have. Another mistake I see with portfolios is not having an about page. And no, your single paragraph write-up about yourself isn't enough. Look, when hiring managers want to hire someone, they of course look at your skills. But they also look for if you seem like a good person to fit in with their team. You actually being a likable person is a big deal during the hiring process. And if you position yourself as a set of skills rather than a human being, no one's going to give you a call back. And so, make a full about page talking about what inspires you, what you hope to learn, be doing, and what interests you. And don't be afraid to get personal by talking about what you do on your free time and the things that make you who you are. The next big mistake is when your portfolio doesn't show what you're trying to get hired for. This could mean anything from not having a logo if you're trying to be a logo designer, or not having websites in your web designer portfolio. You'd be surprised at how many people don't do this. If I'm trying to be a web designer, don't add in your shitty calculator app you made in JavaScript. If you're trying to be a graphic designer, don't add in an animation you made in high school. If you're wanting to be a web developer making WordPress websites, you should be using WordPress to make your website. And if you're a web developer, you definitely should not be using Adobe Portfolio. Make your own website. Stick to what your portfolio is designed to get you hired to do. Now that you know what to avoid, let's talk about some general tips that will guide you into having a great portfolio. First thing are your pages. Your portfolio should not be one page. It should be at least four. Home, About, My Work, and Contact. The home page is going to have sections for all the other pages, with a button leading to them to the respective pages to learn more. So if you have five paragraphs on your about page, the home page will have one paragraph with a button to learn more about you, which leads to the about page. The next thing you need to do is on your home page of your portfolio in the hero section, it should be able to instantly tell you three things without scrolling. Who you are, what you do, and how you can help me. Doing these will instantly communicate to the hiring manager looking at your portfolio if you're what it is they're looking for. Check out Henrik's portfolio here. Without scrolling, I know who he is, his name is Henrik, what he does, he's a front-end developer, and how he can help me. He crafts accessible web experiences. In the land of user experience, Henrik's above the fold section is perfect. With such little content, he manages to set the tone for his entire website, even giving you an idea about the rest of the website will be, just from that one section. And not to mention, at the end of the day, the hiring managers will have anywhere from dozens to hundreds of portfolios to go through. If they only give you a couple seconds chance to convince them to scroll through, the hero section is kind of your only chance to make your play. Next tip, your portfolio needs images of you. I know, you're ugly, I get it, but Putting a face on your site instantly puts you above any other faceless portfolio. It also humanizes you, which we talked about before, making you harder to turn down. You should have at least two images of you, one for your homepage and one for your about page. I don't care if you have to pull it off of your Instagram. Get some photos of you on your site. The last tip for your portfolio is about your portfolio. Here are some rules to follow if you want your portfolio to be good. First, the best portfolio pieces should be first, because they're the most likely to be clicked on. Secondly, you should have at least six pieces to make it look like you actually know what you're doing, or at least three really good ones. Out of those six pieces, at least three of them should be real, which I know can be a problem, but they don't have to be paying clients. Go on local charity websites and look for nonprofits looking for what you can do, or go on Reddit asking if someone needs any help. This goes so much further than fake portfolio pieces. 
having real ones really sets you apart from other people. And the last tip for having great portfolio pieces is to make them pages where you have write-ups about them. Talk about the brainstorming and thinking process you had when you made these portfolio pieces. You can even get pictures of wireframes and sketches you did and put them right on your website. This helps the hiring manager know your design process and if it's something they do as well. And that's it. That's how you make a great portfolio that stands out. Don't make it complicated. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. Just make a modern website and focus on the content. Don't be gimmicky. Just get to the point. If you're interested in becoming a less shit web designer, you can check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.